Hey guys, what's going on? I know it's been a long time, again, like uh, like I usually say, um, but anyways, I hope everyone's doing good, um, especially approaching the holidays, you know, it's a nice time of year. Um, but anyways, getting right into it, I have another Caliburn, I know it's been quite a few, it's like, what do you make? You make anything else? Come on. Um, but people seem to like them that's uh, basically all I sell these days I don't really sell much of anything these days I think I just said no too many times to too many people and people just don't even ask me anymore um, which is fine you know I have like a real job now like when I was in college um, as some of you guys probably know if you've been with me for a while I uh, this is like all I did I basically worked down here so I took every commission that came my way and I made Tons and tons of blasters, but now that I have a, like an actual job, it's um, it's hard to, to spend as much time as I used to uh, down here. So, anyways, it worked out. But commissions are open um, for anybody that was wondering. I know I kind of said they were closed for a while, um, but they are open if you ever want anything. I might say no to you still if it's you know something I don't feel like building because if I'm not into it, it won't be my best work, and that's uh, that's not fair to you. You know, I'm charging you full price for a blaster. You should get my my best work. Um, but anyways, this is uh, my revision, Caliburn, and this is a later revision than even the one that I made in uh, the last video. This is probably the final revision of uh, my machine, Caliburn. I think this is as far as this design can be taken. Uh, it's just uh, without severely changing the design. I don't think that you can really add anything else like thumbhole stock butt pad that was the first um, this has a updated uh, priming mechanism it uh, relies on um, spacers that run in the shaft to keep everything aligned because I noticed the bars would get a little bit wonky over time and uh, this really smoothens up the prime um, also opposed to screws going into just aluminum bars which are like eighth inch aluminum bars that would be a wear component like uh, I made them out of steel in the past um, but even that like the the bolt holes get wallered out after you know a thousand shots or so um, so this has double that um, and then there's a, a pad of polycarbonate just so it doesn't scuff up the inside so the screws are going through that as well um, so it's a little bit more than a quarter inch of uh, material so in theory it should last uh, you know double the time um, and really cool, this is actually all water jet cut. It's uh, not hand cut, I don't do any that anymore. I'm so, so sick of that kind of work, of uh, drill press and bandsaw, I just I just won't do it, uh, I'm sorry. Um, so this is all done on a water jet, uh, everything's cut out. All you have to do is drill the cross uh, holes and tap them, um, that's pretty cool. A little bit more expensive to produce, uh, in low numbers, uh, but in volume, it uh, it's certainly worth it. Like, uh, just for example, put some numbers out for you. I cut four when I cut this, even though I only sold one. So I probably broke even or lost money on this blaster. Um, but the next four, everything's done and cut out and paid for. So I'll, I'll make money on them if I ever sell them. But you know, if I don't, that's fine. This was more just a favor to uh, a friend, a local nerfer. So, you know, I like the guy. I said I'd make him one. Um, but anyways, all aluminum, black, or black, not black, blue HDPE. It was going to be black uh, Delrin because I had a big sheet of it, but he really likes blue. So I found some blue HDPE at a local uh, router shop. They got a CNC router. Um, Aluminum anodized rails, these are blue anodized aluminum rails, they're just from Amazon. Uh, initially, we were going to do the entire blaster blue anodized, um, but I just could not find anyone to do it for a reasonable price. I got a quote, uh, long story short, I got a quote, I get there, um, I'm in my opinion, I think they saw that it was a gun, didn't want to deal with anything to do with guns, and then gave me a ridiculous number. That, that's just my opinion, you know, maybe they just didn't realize the complexity of the you know, uh, anodizing, I don't know what it is. I just think they didn't want to deal with guns. Uh, then we moved on to powder coating. Powder coating was cheaper, but like 200 bucks. So, you know, forget about that. Um, and then I actually thought about getting it zinc plated because I wanted mine zinc plated because mine's steel. 
Um, but the guy just emailed me back in capitals, no guns. So uh, it is what it is. Um, so anyways, another change in here is uh, instead of doing the plate system of priming mech in the back, like where the RAM is, it's milled out of one piece. It's exactly the same as the 3D printed version where it has like a disc with the cutouts for the bars to sit into. Just the only difference is it's milled out of billet aluminum. Um, so that's basically gonna last forever. Um, I actually made the uh, neural thumb screw this time. I think that adds a nice touch. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, another big for me, cause I'm building it, but it's not a huge deal, I guess for the end user, no pins. There, there is all the pins in the original blaster are total pain in the ass for one. Uh, and two, it's just stupid, in my opinion. So all the pins have been eliminated and replaced with uh, counterboard uh, 440 bolts. They're uh, just socket head cap screws, and uh, that, that's the way to do it. Um, so yeah, I had to build some uh, interesting fixtures to do this because I really wanted to make this blue for uh, the guy. I bought half-inch plate because that was all that was available. And two half inch places, obviously one inch, which is way too thick for this. So I had to figure out how to mill these big sheets of uh, HDPE on my little baby mill over there. So I had to make an interesting fixture for that. And, and that was kind of fun. And I actually made a few uh, fixtures to doing all the cross holes. So if I ever do these things again, or, you know, I said I'd produce kits that's still, you know, I don't know if there's any interest in that. Um, but if we do get into that, you know, it's all taken care of. Um, my standard clear dart door at the front, so you can see if you got one in the chamber. The barrel has been left long, um, just because I haven't tuned the blaster really yet, and aluminum's cheap. I'd rather include, you know, a two-foot barrel or, you know, a 18-inch barrel, 20-inch barrel, and you fire your own darts, and you just cut it with some pipe cutters, or especially if it's a local guy, you know, I actually see them in person, so they go, look, hey, it's not shooting very well. Uh, barrels too long with these darts my darts are too fat whatever I just bring my my tube cutters to the next war and uh, trim it up give it a chamfer and we're done so that's what I do for that um, it has my usual initials on here just the part number uh, so that's cool plenty of space uh, here for something and uh, no holes on the grips that is another change and you can engrave it or do whatever you want um, so basically to get these all water jet cut I had to get all the caliber files into a usable format in CAD because the way Captain Slug has it, he has the DXF file set as one DXF file, which is the file that a, a plasma or a water jet takes. And these are tiny little parts on an industrial machine. You cut them and they fall through and you can't tab them because it's on one file. So that was an unforeseen pain in the ass. I had to redraw everything excuse me, get it all into CAD, get it all in Fusion. Um, but now it's done, so if anybody wants them, you let me know, I'll send you over the DXFs. Uh, not suitable for plasma, really, unless you have extremely fine cut consumables, and I think I'm talking to probably no one now. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have a plasma table, or uh, maybe some of you at work. Plasma, laser, water jet, whatever. Water jet and laser, 100% okay. Uh, don't bother with the plasma. The holes are way too small. Um, it makes a mess. I tried one out of steel and it was scrap. You, you could sort of use some of it, but it's a waste of time. Um, so anyways, I have an AFG at the front and that is mounted to the same kind of uh, anodized aluminum rail. Prime is quite smooth. Uh, it's smoother than the usual, like with that stupid uh, pipe fitting. That is on the original, it's very comfy. It's uh, probably probably the nicest one I've ever built uh, as far as precision and just like form factor and everything about it. I finally found these steel bars for the priming thing so I didn't have to use that wire. And uh, yeah, it's just a sweet blaster. I really wish I had the energy to make another one for myself because I have all the parts obviously. Um, but yeah, I'll show you some of the tooling that I made if you if you care, and uh, I'll show you the nest too of the the water jet because it's uh, I think it's pretty cool, anyways. And here's the seal. If you didn't hear that, dead perfect seal. Like it's not even moving at all. 
So yeah, that's nice. Always nice to have a perfect seal. So we'll be right back on the bench. All right, so now we're on my extremely messy bench. Sorry, it's I know it's always a mess. Um, so here's one of the nests. This is the quarter inch sheet. And there's still, uh, as you can see, there's parts in there still because I didn't punch them out. And that's what I mean by tabbing. With Captain Slug's DXF file, you cannot leave these little tabs because the file is every part, right? Every part is in one file. So it's basically unusable, in my opinion, on an industrial machine. If you have a small little thing, like a home shop plasma, if it could even handle the cutting, you know, you'd probably be fine because you're not sorting through weeks worth of scrap in the scrap bin anyway. So, yep, that's the quarter inch and that was done on a water jet. And I basically just bought, um, I think I had to buy almost a quarter sheet of aluminum to do this, uh, to do the, the four. No, I forget what I bought. I bought like four or five of these panels um from just uh metal supermarkets and they sheared them to size and it, it was just a nice size for me and they they had them i got a, a better deal than than buying um a full sheet like when you buy off cuts so that helped me out a little bit so that's pretty cool and it's very accurate i uh really love i love water jet so that was the quarter inch and then here's the eighth inch and the eighth inch came with that uh, plastic film to protect it which is always nice and then i i taped up at the back um, just because water jet can leave kind of a uh, an odd um, odd pattern where it starts. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's this stuff called garnet in the water, and that's like an abrasive, and it leaves like these sort of funny marks on the side that it pierced. Um, so that that is that and then this is the fixture I had to make I really overbuilt it because I figured I could just Drill other holes in it at other points in time if I ever need another fixture plate So it's solid steel and it's just like clamps into my vise and then it's just like a, a pallet um, So basically what I had to do Was find bolt locations on this side because this is the size of the stock find bolt locations that don't affect the pattern of the stock drill through the plastic bolt it to this keeping the bolts below the milling line mill it to thickness uh, and then do that again so you have two pieces that sandwich together to be the perfect thickness for the caliburn um, stock so that was kind of cool making special tooling and then most of the other uh, like operations on the mill like all the drilling stuff is just like locating with like a, a regular mill stop or you know, your, your usual stuff, like if any of you guys spend any time in a machine shop, you know, one, two, three blocks, uh, angle plates, stuff like that, nothing. This was the only custom piece I had to make, which uh, I don't mind doing because I have it probably for the rest of my life until it's all full of holes and shot. Um, so anyway, guys, I uh, hope you're all doing well. Like I said, uh, I've actually been down here quite a bit making a blaster for myself, um, but it's a secret. So I will show you when I'm done. And it's not a caliber, I promise. And it's nothing you've ever seen before. It's of my own design. Um, so I will show you that when it's done. And uh, yeah, this this gun took way, way, way too long just because the whole anodizing process. Like it's probably been done for uh, at least six months. And yeah, it's just getting to the point that I feel bad. I felt bad six months ago. But anyways, that's just how she goes sometimes. I uh, hope you're all doing well, and I hope to see you again soon.